Okay, well, I'm ready to get started turning on this uh, big old blank right here. Uh, let me see. I think, uh, yep, it's 5 inches by 5 inches by right at 14. I got some jagged ends here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the put it in the lathe, and I'm going to just uh, you know make a cylinder out of it. Cut cut a tenon on one end. Uh, then I plan on putting another piece on the top of the vase. So I haven't decided what type of wood I want to use yet. I think I kind of think walnut looks nice uh, on the top. So a good dark wood to finish it out on the top. So, uh, I think I'm going to get started turning this down. Basically, what I'm looking at, what I want to do is, I want to come up in a in an arc this way, and then come back with a cove this way. Now, this is way too long for me to try to turn with my tools. I don't have any deep hollowing tools or anything like that. So I'm going to try one of Cap, uh, Captain Eddie Castellan's tricks, and I'm going to cut this thing. I'm going to cut it right where the, the arc meets the cove. I'm going to cut that. Cut it in half. I'm going to hollow out the bottom half, hollow out the top half, and then I'm going to put them back together before I finish it up. We'll see how that works out. I'm not really sure how that's going to do myself, but hey, I made it all out of scraps anyway, and... Uh, if anything else, I'll, I'll be learning something. So you can't, you can never lose if you're learning something, right? All right. Well, let's let's get started and just see what uh, see what we come up with. Okay. Now I've got uh, I've got my centers punched. I've got a a spur center uh, up here on the headstock for good positive uh, good positive turn. And uh, all I want to do right now is get this thing rounded down and uh, get me a tenon put on this end here. Okay. And once I do that, I'll spin it around and I'll mount it back in the Barracuda. Barracuda 2. All right. Let me see if I can't get this thing turned down a little bit. Stand back. Okay, I've got her down fairly round, you know, just kind of roughed out a little bit. I want to go ahead and get started and put my tenon down on this end here. So what I'm going to do is I want to get this, this tenon My jaws are about nine sixteenths deep. I don't want to go quite that deep, so I'm going to go about a half inch deep on my jaws. Uh, that way, they don't sit all the way down on the edge down here. Uh, so when it, when I clamp the jaws down, they won't be sitting on that bottom. This shoulder will be resting against the wood. Is what I'm is what I'm getting at. It's a lot stronger. Uh, if you get it down in here, you can get a uh, kind of a rocking motion. So uh, you know you really you really don't want to do that. This is uh, I want I want my jaws to be close almost closed almost closed completely up. I'm gonna face this edge off here, and then I'm gonna drop back about a half inch for my tenon. That's a bad habit to uh, move your rest while while this thing's spinning. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna begin parting. Parting this off. I'm gonna face this first. Thank you. 
Built me one of these little jigs. One of these little jigs. And this is about an inch and a half. That's uh it's a little bit wider than an inch and a half, so when I bring this down and I and I get it over my tenon, if my tenon's that that width, then I'm pretty much good to go with the uh, with my tenon. So we're gonna start turning this thing down. kind of check it. I just don't want to go too far. Yeah, I've still got a good little piece to go. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, I'm very, very close. I'm uh, within an eighth of an inch. To me, that's good enough. Uh, my, my jaws will be closed down almost circular. Now I'm just going to take it on out to my half mark. Don't try to get too aggressive, just let it eat. I'll be back when my tenon's done. Okay. Well now I've uh, I've got it reversed around. I've got my tenon cut. If you notice my jaws are almost closed and uh, the tenon doesn't come all the way down all the way down to the bottom of the jaws. I've got just a very small gap there. But it's square against the edge. On the Barracuda 2 which I bought from Penn State. Uh, I believe it's a very good chuck. And uh, it actually came with a faceplate for the back, uh, an index and fake faceplate. That's what this thing's for. Put a little pin through there and I can index with it. But uh, the Barracuda 2 uh, has done me a good job. It's a very strong chuck, uh, but it doesn't have a dovetail. So like I said in a previous video, I've, I don't have to worry about a dovetail. I always use my tail stock, and for this for this project, I'm going to use the tail stock the entire time. I just uh, I don't like this big chunk of wood coming up. It's about a five inch diameter, about 14 inches long, and even with a steady rest, uh, which I just built. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, even with a steady rest, I'm going to keep my tail stock up. So uh, I'm just going to get started turning uh, turning a rough shape on this thing. Actually, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into slices. That way I, I don't end up with stripes. I end up with, you know, more of a random type pattern. I'm going to cut this thing into slices and rotate each, rotate each piece so that uh, I end up with kind of a random pattern. Okay. This is the bottom. This is where my tenon is. This is the top. And right, let me find it here. Right here, this line here is going to be actually the dividing line between the bottom and the top. So uh, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to cut all these random, random lines here so that I can uh, I can turn it and make it look more you know random and I think it's really gonna make a good look but I'm gonna get started and uh, I'm gonna try to cut these down I'm using my miter gauge Get 
Well, as you can see, the bandsaw done a good job. It uh, took a little while, but uh, you just have to be easy. So that no burns or anything. So, uh, you know, uh, take it easy with your equipment. Don't, don't just try to shove things through. But anyway, I'm going to face these off. I'm going to face off all these things on my sander. And then I'm going to glue them back together. Remembering that between 3 and 4, I've numbered them all. Between 3 and 4, this is going to be the top of the vase. And this is going to be the bottom of the vase. And I'm going to have a piece of walnut or most likely walnut, maybe a piece of cherry up here on the top. But I'll put a newspaper between here and glue these together so I can get them apart easier later. Okay, just facing these, just facing these off, nice and easy on the uh, on the sander. It just wasn't going to work out on the lathe very well. I couldn't, I could get one side face, but then I have have trouble getting the other side face. So, all right, here we go. All I'm going to do is just knock off the saw mark and make sure it's flat. Very good. I don't know if you can see this. I'm very good here and on this side. So now I'm going to start my glue up as okay. I go. Let me get my glue. Okay, I'm looking for my numbers. Okay, seven, eight. Okay, so I know it goes this way. Now I want to go with kind of a random pattern, so I'm going to turn it to a pattern that I kind of like. Don't go slacking on your glue. Now I'm going to put this up here just until it tacks up good and then I'm gonna put the other one up there okay I ended up I realized that uh, I was gonna need to put some kind of pressure block on here to kinda distribute the pressure out over the over this thing so uh, this is what I came up with a piece of cherry it was just a glue block that I had up here but it's got a good cup in the bottom of it so it puts even pressure on the outside of the circle and uh, this is the way I'm going to glue each one of them up. I've got good pressure all the way around now. Okay, I'll be back uh, once I've got this whole thing glued up. Okay, I've got the bottom all glued up. Now I'm just uh, getting ready to attach the top to it. The top part. Let me just get plenty of glue on here. I put a little bit of extra glue on this one here because I'm going to show you what I'm fixing to do. And get some of that glue on this one. Okay. Just like that. Now I take a sheet of newspaper just like that. Okay, so we'll put the newspaper on, put our three up there. Kind of. This really isn't critical because I'm going to be cutting this apart again anyway. Okay, I think I'm good. All right, and put pressure on it. Now, when it comes time. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to turn the outside of the whole thing first. That'll get all my dimensions right and everything like that. When I come back to cut this, all I have to do is break it, hopefully. All I have to do is put a chisel in here and hit it a couple times. 
and it'll break loose. At least I think. I've seen people do it before and it worked fine, so I'm going to try it now. Should be good. Yes, sir. Really good. Okay. I'll wait a few minutes till that tacks up good and then I'll, I'll continue on with my last two pieces. I'll come back when I'm ready to uh, start turning and shaping some more. Well, I'm finished uh, gluing everything. Now I'll probably have to wait until tomorrow before I start turning. But, uh, and let, let all this gear, glue cure good. I finally figured out what I'm going to do with the top. I'm using uh, mahogany up there. I had a, a nice a nice piece of that. But what's going to end up happening, uh, some of this is going to be tenon. Uh, only maybe three quarter inch to an inch maybe will actually be on the finished piece. Okay, I think I'm uh, pretty good now. It's been about four hours since uh, I did my last glue. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my roughing gouge and go ahead and start turning this back into a cylinder again. So uh, if you'll bear with me, we will get started, and then I'm gonna start start shaping it from one end to the other. Remember this newspaper this newspaper is is uh, is gonna be breaking apart right there. This is gonna be the top, and this is gonna be the bottom. I'm going to have to cut a tenon up here. So I'm going to get started on that now. Uh, safety glasses on. Let's see here. I get the shape on down just a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to use my half-inch bowl gouge, and I'm going to start. I'm going to start shaping this this cove in here. I want to bring it down uh, to a nice shape, and uh, I really don't know how far in I want to go yet, but we'll see. We'll see where it ends up at. My half-inch bowl gouge. Okay, I'm getting close to the shape that I'm looking for. Now, most of this will be turned off, but uh, I'm looking in here. I've got a couple of small voids and little places in the wood, but in overall, I'm really liking this, and uh, I'm just going to keep on keep on trucking, work on this cove a little bit more, and then I'll start the back. I'm going to blend it together with, with some scraping. in the shape of that. And I'm going to continue on. Yeah, 
there. That little sear scrape really, really smooth that mahogany up. Very good. Okay. I'm going to start shaping on the bottom. Well, okay. Well, I've got my tenon down here. I've kind of got the bottom shaped up. Put a, uh, I believe I'm going to use this foot here. Uh, this will all be turned off. And, of course, the tenon will also. But uh, I believe I'm going to have a problem here. Uh, right here where my cove starts, that's where I need to break that newspaper. Well, I'm not going to take that chance because this is awful thin right in here. I'm not going to try to break it with a, uh, with a chisel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hacksaw, something I saw Carl Jacobson do, and uh, I'm going to try to saw it off. Uh, hopefully with a newspaper, it'll make, uh, make sawing it uh, a lot easier. So, there I go. Gonna cut me a little, a little groove right here for my saw to ride in. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take two rest off. I'm going to try to cut this with my hacksaw. Oh yeah, this is going to work. It's going to work just fine. Okay. Well, I got it cut. Pretty good. But my saw touched the uh, edge, so I got some tear out right here. I'm going to have to fix it somehow. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll epoxy it. I'll put some colored in epoxy in there. I may even cut a groove around through here and just and put a whole piece in. Uh, maybe a piece of walnut or something like that around it or another piece of mahogany or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to have to make a part three to this video and I'll hollow out the bottom and hollow out the top and see if I can't get this thing finished up. Thank you for watching.